Three years ago, I committed to the British people that I would renegotiate our position in the European Union and hold an in-out referendum. Now I am delivering on that commitment. You will decide, and whatever your decision, I will do my best to deliver it. Three years ago, I committed to the British people that I would renegotiate our position in the European Union and hold an in-out referendum. Now I am delivering on that commitment. You will decide, and whatever your decision, I will do my best to deliver it. Three years ago, I committed to the British people that I would renegotiate our position in the European Union and hold an in-out referendum. Now I am delivering on that commitment. You will decide, and whatever your decision, I will do my best to deliver it. Well, our greetings. Right, as you can, have you just, uh, have you, as you've just seen, uh, the referendum speech by uh, David Cameron and the unequivocal uh, proposition to the, the public and the promise he made that he would uh, offer the referendum to the public and it was in or out. No, I've shown that uh, video, uh, that clip three times in a row. It's not the whole clip but just the, the main promise. So this um, video is just to highlight some points to consider, some lawful points. I'm going to look at the coronation oath and go through some lawful points and observations and learning myself I don't claim to understand all the law and uh, so partly I'm going to show some uh, lawful points for people to consider and study further and I'm going to cover the Bill of Rights and the um, Constable Oaf and just highlight the truth and leave it to the intelligence of the viewer to um, seek to fill in the blanks of, of what I'm trying to highlight. Um, as I say, I don't have all the answers. Some of this is going to be my own conjecture. And uh, what I really want, want to convey is uh, what I suspect is, um, and I'll back that up with, um, other people's research but I want to convey that our country is under siege um, I, I don't want to I'm not against the law and I'm going to read the scripture shortly to share my heart and position where I stand or where I've been placed to stand by my my saviour and my God and I trust his word because he is he is the law as a believer he is the law, he's the word of God and he's uh, left us a faithful record of his law and purpose but my um, thoughts on what is taking place and what will take place in the future and I'm not saying this is a prophecy thus saith the Lord, I'm just saying this is um, my own conjecture based on just based on research and a, a certain a certain amount of knowledge um, as I say I'm still learning and I'd encourage people to seek out knowledge and understanding of uh, the truth of what's going on and looking at the uh, complicated web of the underworld and that's very complicated and there needs to be a lot of various research I'm going to cover a bit about the web and the um, mother of harlots and the its nature, its parasitical nature and how it infiltrates, undermines and it, uh, it's a cross-party infiltration of many many independent groups and it utilises things to its own advantage and it, it uh, infiltrates and changes and twists and affects laws and uh, corrupts it corrupts, so I want to highlight it uh, the obvious corruption but I'm not going to be able to put the hit the nail on the head exactly I'm just going to highlight some points to 
further research. But what I what I believe is taking place is that for a long time our nation's been infiltrated, blackmailed. And if you know anything about uh, military intelligence and uh, counterintelligence, is how um, even the CIA, the British government. Uh, all have knowledge of this uh, practice, so it's not a conspiracy theory, I'm talking of conspiracy facts. Um, people get um, targeted, they get compromised and then they get blackmailed when they're in power. So when they go to do something lawfully, um, out comes the blackmail, out comes the corkscrew or the thumb screws, puts the arm behind somebody's back and says if you don't do what we say, this is going to happen, these photos or this knowledge is going to ruin you or it may be a threat on somebody's life or just knowing that those that power is there and I'd encourage people to research the history of the Catholic Church and what the Popes put, put nations leaders through how uh, the Jesuits have infiltrated, set up the uh, Illuminati uh, infiltrated Freemasonry and then you've got all the different branches of uh, secret societies uh, there's the apostate Jewish element but predominantly it's the Gentile the non-Jews who dominate the um, covert secret powers the secret societies where they, where they um, infiltrate and get um, rub shoulders with important people, compromise people into those secret societies, thinking that they're they're good charitable events, and it's all all the intrigue is all tied into tied into everything. It's like a cancer, like an infection, and it uh, it has an influence, and that's something that needs to be studied. Um, the EU is a, um, has a great part to play in twisting our nation's arm and uh, dominating. You just have to think about uh, free trade and look at the mechanisms of what that actually implies. It's not free trade, it's a controlled trade. And uh, if, you don't, if you're not part of it, you're not going to survive. And you can hear all the rhetoric in the media. Oh, we're going to... If we leave... Um, if you watch David Cameron speak, he gives his uh, opinion and thoughts that he wanted to remain in the EU, have an influence from the inside. Whereas a lot of people want to break completely free of it because they know historically it's corrupt. And um, they won't tell you publicly, but they know what it's associated to. It's associated to the dominance of the Roman Catholic Church and the powers and the threats that, that they have on every nation. If you look through the Jesuit history, um, which is a secret, uh, covert military arm, uh, intelligence arm of the Catholic Church, where the uh, priests take oaths to infiltrate nations, governments, education, and twist and undermine, firstly, the law of independent nations, countries, and also the Holy Word of God, which is preserved in the King James Bible. That's why. Uh, Britain, Britain, Great Britain are Protestant by historical heritage and uh, that's been lost sadly so partly this is why I'm highlighting uh, this talk and uh, to just show certain aspects of this um, corruption and infiltration how masonry and the Illuminati was set up to do one thing and that was to undermine a, a to persecute the Jews and undermine the the laws of independent nations and the word of God the Torah and the the Old Testament the Tanakh the Torah that's the law the law of Moses and then the New Testament the new covenant which was fulfilled and given by the blood the precious blood of Jesus Christ and his completing of the Old Covenant, the fulfilling of prophecy, his death, burial and resurrection, dying for the sins of all mankind, um, raising, overcoming death, sin and death, because he's holy and God, and uh, entering back into heaven to to give, uh, give us an eternal rest and escape 
from sin and death and hell, which is a consequence of unbelief and remaining in, in our sins. So it's all tied into our history and the, the Protestant uh, Reformation to fight and, and um, overcome these Catholic, this Catholic dominance of the Pope and the Pope believes he's the supreme ruler on, of heaven and earth and he has the keys or the authority to rule this earth and uh, the sealing power of whatever he says goes, whatever he says is deemed law just like uh, Nebuchadnezzar in the Old the Old Testament. That's what the Pope believes. That's what the Pope believed in history. That's what he believed yesterday. That's what he believes today. And that's what he believes tomorrow. And the public are uh, oblivious of it. If you look at all the world powers, all the world's leaders, they all, they all pay homage to the Pope. Um, America, Britain, they all the Church, the Church of England, sadly, all pay homage to um, the Pope and kiss his ring, and they, they have to wear black to signify of death and their sin, and only his eminence, the Pope, the uh, blasphemous heretic, is uh, allowed to wear white because he considers himself holy and in God's stead. But he's just a sinful man and uh, a corrupt heretic who um, reverses everything to make out that everybody else is her a heretic because they don't hold to his, his authority. Uh, whether he, they really believe that or not is, a, is another question, but that's what they believe and that, and that, that will remain. And that, that power has a chokehold on all powers and is dominant in the underworld and through the underworld he dominates the public overworld what we see in law, what we see in, in, on the telly what we read in the newspapers he is a, a major factor of this influence and, the, and in, in history, if you study the Jesuit history uh, there's a good book to read Edmund Paris, all tied in with uh, na the Nazis the rat lines the corrupt powers, communism, Nazism, all, to, all, all, all has a hand in it. So that, that's a, a good book to, to study. And there's, there's many other works that have been done, but that's particularly a, a well-researched book. And um, most of the information is from a Jesuit priest who... Uh, who come on to Christ and, and gave his testimony of uh, what actually goes on in the Vatican and um, so in history the Jesuits were banned there, there was a time where they were banned I think it was Catherine the Great that um, she, she was um, a Russian um, leader a Russian royal figurehead um, I think a Lutheran by faith, but she welcomed in the Jesuits when they were banned from Europe because of their machinations and corruption. Um, and they were banned by Oliver Cromwell. They were banned by our British government. They were banned by the uh, authority that we've been granted in, in our country to uh, rule over lawlessness. Well, that's why we have the law. There's nothing wrong with the law. The law is for um, uh, to fight evil and and to protect the public. But if that those people infiltrate and get their hands in, they turn everything on its head. So that that's some things I'd like to try and highlight. And um, it it shows that somebody has got a gun to our nation's head, pointing the gun at the head. And people are too frightened to speak out, it seems. So I, I, I question what compromise have they got over our our powers? Are our powers um, corrupted? Have they been compromised into sinister sick practices like paedophilia, like um, ritual, you know, like the... Um, you hear stories, I'm not saying that they're factual, I'm just considering what has been um, observed and claimed about um, 
Well, we'll look at Prince Andrew and uh, um, Ep Jeffrey Epstein, the known paedophile and um, uh, grooming young children, young girls, and you only wonder what other connections he's involved in. And then Prince Andrew's alleged um, party to um, un having sex, um, abusing, abusing that woman. And being involved with Jeffrey Epstein, so you you have to question. Well, what else? And then you look at the Hampstead Heath case, and of those um, children abused in in the Queen's constituent constituency, you know, on on her turf, where they had ritual sacrifices and uh, paedophile rings, organised paedophile rings, and then there's so many so many accounts and testimonies that you can't dismiss. That these things are, are factual, because these are because if these people got their day in court, um, it would bring the house of cards down. So I am questioning: is is this part of the compromise? These ritual satanic connections, and that goes through Freemasonry, the so the left arm of Freemasonry, not not the right arm of Freemasonry, where most of the members are oblivious of this. And most most Christians who or professing Christians who uh, get into Freemasonry, it's just simply to compromise them. So, so they defend what Freemasonry is. But what really goes on in Freemasonry is Luciferian, and it's the worshiping of of Lucifer, the devil, just like the Illuminati, just like the Skull and Bones, just like all these um, secret societies. They are to compromise and get people into these pagan pagan practices, witchcraft, um, satanic rituals. It's all interwoven, and that that goes right up to the top into the um, Catholic Church. And you, if you look at ancient history, uh, Rome it were into this pagan practice, MK Ultra sacrifices, offering to their vain gods and idols and images. And it's it's no different today. So I want to consider those um, those things. And what what I what I can see that I believe is taking place. If you look at the immigration law, which comes from the EU, that we've had to have our mouth um, propped open and force fed all this immigration, and nobody's been allowed to speak out against it. But my my reasoning and uh, belief is that it's to be to plant political people and also planting criminal cells so you can bring in all the um, all the dross if you like all the corruption all the lawless people of, the, of these European countries pump them into England so they can get established so they can be utilized by these covert powers and this all ties into the underworld of, of drugs if you know anything about the um, the drugs world, how it is usually run by somebody high up. Now the drugs is run by a high level organisation who employ a criminal underworld element to do the um, administration, the smuggling and the distri distribution. You look at, uh, what was it, um, Mr Nice, if you know his story, how he was um, employed by a somebody in Parliament and made contact is given contacts with the IRA and got it and, and got into the 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 you know in, into the drug trade in the big scale and that big scale goes up through the military bases and uh, there's so many similar testimonies and stories of this fact how that the drugs are controlled by the higher powers the the infiltrated powers within the law that have um, infiltrated the law and um, are breaking the law, they are corrupting the law and uh, that's what all these powers try to do is turn the public against the law by giving the law a bad name so that will uh, ferment uh, anger and um, either indifference or riots and I think that's what um, all the immigration is for because you can all these crimes, all these knife crimes, all these moped crimes, all these stabbings, all these um, criminal 
smuggling of um, immigrant um, illegal immigrants. They're all it's all managed and organised by a higher mafia, and that mafia is run by a higher administration within the government. And uh, this is, I believe, known about. And the corruption and the compromise is also known about, but it's too big and fearful to be publicly admitted. So we're kept in the dark and fed uh, horse manure. And personally, what I foresee, if um, the Brexit... Uh, well, I can't really predict how... Brexit's going to go. I don't. I don't think there's going to be a No Deal, which is what was voted for, and I think the powers would be all out to get a compromise. But I, I perceive like the the London riots a few years ago, and if you carefully examine the broad picture, you could see that that was sponsored by cells. There were cells planted to encourage the rebellion. And then the police, if you look at the stories, the police powers from the higher, higher ranking officers were told to stand down. So the corruption is right up to the top levels. If you read a book, um, now I can't confirm that this is factual, but if you read um, a book by Michael Shrimpton, who's a British attorney, he's accused of paedophilia because they... Um, he claims that they downloaded porno uh, child pornography on his computer, and that's a, a known tactic. But Michael Shrimpton uh, reveals the German intelligence agency, the DVD, that's infiltrated the British intelligence, and it runs it from the inside, and it and it um, has has things over people like. Um, corrupts people and gets them a uh, compromise so it can blackmail them and leave leave uh, decisions that and, and you consider well why 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 are the things that should be done lawfully aren't being done and there can only be one answer it's because um people are compromised by these powers and blackmail like um that f that politician who um got us into Europe in the first place, it was, it was apparently, oh, what was his name, Cyril Smith, it was claimed that, um, and that all ties into Jimmy Savile, and the and, and Jimmy Savile was a close um, aide and close friend of the royal family, so again there's another lead into the royal family with this paedophile uh, corruption, how, um, and you, if you listen to uh, John Wedge's testimony, a police officer who 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 investigated vice and um, paedophile, uh, found many paedophile victims, and realised it went right up to the top. And he he tried to expose it, and uh, within the police force, they uh, shut him up and threatened him. His son was murdered, um, almost killed, had his neck broken. And so he was shut down, and now he's an activist, and possibly um, frightened, and they've got um, compromised because he's probably frightened for his life. So, so whether he can be trusted, but his his original testimony can be trusted, just like um, the testimonies of the young children who witnessed against the paedophile rings in Hampstead Heath, and anyone who speaks out against. Uh, Ham, um, Hemel Hampstead or whatever it is is um, targeted by mass mass groups of people and trials and uh, even people who've um, protested about it have been thrown in prison and threatened and uh, targeted and their lives made a misery and then their characters blackened and then you get a sponsored group going after people who speak out against these things. Even John Wedge has got um, the same sort of people after him. And anyway, anybody who exposes the Hampstead um, paedophile case. And then you've got um, the other paedophile, um, people like um, Richard Kerr, and uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of children, uh, Bill Maloney, 
all at the all have the same testimonies and that was closed down by one false testimony released and found out to be uh, fraudulent and then that closes the lid on all the other people's um, faithful testimonies and suffering and how it's all buried so it all ties into uh, paedophilia and the corruption and hold I believe it has on the government and this this infiltration is um, done through the secret societies and the the German what is claimed to be the German um, military a intelligence agency infiltrated through our, our law and our military and so it, it controls everything from the top down so you know are the are the stories about the royal family true or are they or are they used to threaten the royal family to keep them in their place so they, they're unable to act? Or, or are they actually compromised like Cyril Smith was? And he was a paedophile. And apparently it's been known he was a paedophile. And that's the reason why he agreed to take us, the Great Britain into Europe, which is actually unconstitutional as far as our, our constitutional laws go. We haven't got a constitution, but we have the common law, the Bill of Rights, which stems back to the uh, Protestant Reformation, Oliver Cromwell, King James, kicking out King Charles I, and uh, and then again uh, James II, who tried to pick up the reins again for the Catholic powers to dominate our country. So it all roots into Roman Catholicism and the Jesuits and our cover the points on the law and looking at the coronation oath just just highlight some things that have been admitted from the original because it all it should be based on the bill of rights but uh, there's uh, just a few things that have been admitted but what i perceive is going to happen is is that if we do get out of brexit and this is just my conjecture everything will be done to sabotage it and all these um, criminals, uh, all these different uh, criminal elements uh, pumping all these different uh, illegal immigrants and uh, legitimised immigration is to plant these uh, c corrupt criminal cells in the community and overload our nation with them. So they can be called and utilised when we don't toe the line. So if we do get out of Brexit and start making progress, there'll be red flag, false flag attacks. So um, if that's the case, I just anybody watching this just to not react to them violently or lawlessly, because the the criminal the law will come down on it. And if you um, think it's the law. You know, it's the good people in the law. You're going to destroy what good we have left, what lawful people we have left. Fight up against this. And if you think the time of all the um, sponsoring of the pop music and the anarchy, thinking of the Sex Pistols and the punk movement, all, all to do, all to have a kick at the law, all to all to raise up a rebellious generation and uh, cultivate that attitude within the youth and that you know that's generational that goes that's how these um, powers use and influence children we're, we're teaching them half truths and getting them to react against the law I'm, I'm going to show you that the law is good and the law is right and there are lawful people in our government so to react in a rebellious um, anarchist manner is uh, what will be pre expected and then that will be uh, utilized um, to the corrupt the corrupt infiltrations powers advantage and that's why I think all these um, immigration the immigration policy to start with from the EU forcing us to take all these people overburdening our NHS to break it and then to privatize it that, that's the game that's the intention I believe and also if we 
resist and we do get out of uh, Europe and we make a go of it on our own, which we're quite capable of and which is all fear-mongering to stop us getting out of Europe because people are fr either frightened to get out of Europe because they're compromised by these powers and they toe the line and anybody who wants to make a stand, make a lawful stand against it is going to come across these uh, red false flag attacks and that that's what, this is how the, these covert powers f um, inf um, lever people to make to, to toe the line so I believe that all these criminal elements have been left in, allowed in this country and then allowed to have free reign and they're protected just like Islam's protected just like all, all these things are in place to be utilised by these powers to shake, rattle here and there and then to overload our lawful lawful powers so if the if the public were to react they'd play right into the hands of the these um like extinction rebellion you know they're causing major disruption to people in the you know on the back of a false argument you know a propagated argument so they can corrupt and uh rebel in in a way and break the law so in the name of uh, righteousness so that you know two wrongs don't make a right so I don't support this uh, this uh, extinction rebellion but what can you do what can you do you can only um, be lawful and pray pray for the, our lawful powers so I believe that it, these powers are um, planting these cells planting these criminal cells whether that's m m not not the general everyday Muslim, the fam you know, just everyday families, but planting amongst those families corrupt elements, organised corrupt elements who are criminal. And they are to lead Muslims into into a riot in, in, in that avenue. Then you've got a criminal element to rally the public, the British public, the um people who uh, have, have a longer heritage here and uh, lead, lead those people, you know, the, the youth into uh, rebellion, those people who aren't perhaps religious, the, the atheist kind of element of British society. Then you've got the, the Muslims and then you've got other, other elements. Uh, even Christian, you've got, um, you've got, uh, you'll have a Christian infiltration to lead Christians astray into wars or it's just like the Inquisition you know to lead lead this lead Christians into a holy war which was contrived so I believe all this um, immigration has been contrived to plant all these different cells in different avenues to utilize it to cause rebellion and lawlessness so then they can utilise that to their advantage because of the fallout and that will put a strain on our lawful government. And that's been uh, planned for and expected. So I only pray that the people will see through it and not act lawf unlawfully, they will act appropriately uh, with the avenues of the law provided. If that's a, you know, if that's a possibility, that, that will be blocked. But that's the only right way to go, is to uh, petition lawfully. You can't do anything else, because you're playing to the hands of these uh, corrupt powers. So that's my, um, that's my thoughts on what's taking place in our country, the uh, infiltration of planting criminal cells, whether that's in Islamic groups, whether that's in... Uh, civil groups, whether that's corporate, whether that's uh, Christianity, all areas, are, all bases are covered and to foresee what uh, um, what will take place they will have a, a means to call upon to uh, disrupt, to, uh, to cause false flags, to further lever our country into submission and uh, uh, that's what I believe is taking place with Brexit. We're 
how there's a gun held to our head uh, our powers have got their arm twisted behind their back and they're up against it but um, as a Christian I, I support the law and I, I'm going to read um, Romans chapter 13 just to clarify the position of uh, the Christian and, the, and what the law is because God's the law and he's ordained the powers and the powers he's ordained are the devil because of um, unbelief and that allows by default the devil to remain in power in in his spiritual office of power and that is a, the opposition to God and all things good so God's plan is a probation to try to try to try men whether they choose right or wrong because we have free agency we've been given a free agency the right to choose right or wrong and if you choose wrong you pay the consequence and that's what the that's why God's ordained the law the lawful powers to come down on the the unlawful now the question the question is why aren't why why isn't it seen by the public that they're going after the Law, the, with the lawful powers in in house, you know, with this um, paedophile corruption, is it all mumbo jumbo? Well, if you investigate it, it's it's clearly a fact that these things exist. This, um, I'm not, you know, and and it's all over. It's all brushed over like with, uh, the satanic panic. You know, it's not satanic panic. That's just. Uh, a buzzword to stop people investigating to, to to discover the truth for themselves. It's like um, when children are traumatized and abused, and then they have the recalling of their memories of, of uh, paedophilia. Then they call that oh, that's false memory. You know, they they get somebody to give a false witness and say oh, that's false memory syndrome. Don't believe it. You know, so that stops the public. That turns the ignorant against and closes down the truth and it stops people investigating and there's so many areas that that, that whitewash brush is used that dustpan and brush is used to cover up the mainstream general ignorance of the population so if you're you're one of those people I'd, I'd, I'd encourage you not to dismiss things lightly because you're part, you're on the bus. You're part of the problem. But just to go and seek knowledge, and dig deep, and dig broad, and dig deep in your broad, broad search, and keep studying. Keep, you know, knowledge is uh, never ending. We have, we will never have a full knowledge. Only God has a full knowledge. And if you don't believe in God, well, what do, you know? What what possible? What what else is there to believe in except lies and corruption? That that's hopelessness, you know. But we have a sure a surety of that from the Word of God, from the prophecy of God being fulfilled, from the actual reality of creation, and from God's Word and God's Son, we have a sure record. That God lives and He's just and He's holy and He's sovereign, and He's ordained these powers: the devil, the lawful, the queen, Parliament, and we we are fortunate in our nation to to still have those things. But that every independent nation is being choked by the mother of harlots, which is the Pope, and that's historic. And if you you study history, you will discover that for yourself. You won't need me to tell you, and don't just take my word for it, because I'm, you know, I'm a novice in these areas, but and I continue to study, um, and I will continue to study and and learn more and more and build on that which I know and get rid of that which I where I've been in error, so I can constantly learn and be teachable. So I would only encourage people to be in the same mind, to reason things through, to study and examine. Then you come to that knowledge yourself. Then you don't need anyone to teach you. Then you can show people that knowledge. In whatever weakness you are, the Lord's grace is sufficient for our weakness. 
and the truth speaks for itself. So I, I just want to, as best as I can, highlight some truth and give also give some conjecture. I'm going to read now um, Romans chapter 13. Uh, if you read Romans chapter 12, that's talking to the Christian body of believers of how God's law, which is basically love, that's what uh, Romans 13, which I'm going to read, will cover. But that's to uh, how we should treat one another in the Christian body. Not the ch organised church, but those who've uh, received Jesus Christ and have his spirit indwelling in their lives. That's the church body and how how that law of love should be manifest among believers. But uh, chapter 13 is a general overview of the world powers and God ordaining those powers. So I'm going to read, start with that chapter. Chapter 13, the book of Romans, the epistle to the Roman church. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Damnation means um, stunted growth. It means, uh, and that, that stunted growth will stop you learning, stop you knowing, and then you'll be under condemnation from God. You'll remain under condemnation, and if you die, you're damned forever. So damnation means a blocking of knowledge, a blocking of the truth, a blocking of your own progression. So you'll remain ignorant, lost, and under condemnation, and that's, what, that's the state of the world. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So basically what God's saying is that, that the Queen and the Parliament, those in power, those in office, uh, currently it's um, President jo um, Prime Minister Johnson. So he is, a, he is a, a minister of God. He's been placed there by God and through the process of the law which God has ordained. So he is a minister for good against evil you might not agree with agree with all the policies but he's he's doing his best and he and you've got to consider what what the um anybody gets into office is up against um wherefore you must need to be subject not only for wrath but also for conscience sake for for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. So the law is um, never out of office. There's always somebody in the law, just like the coronation's going to show, that there's always a king in power. And it's a continual office ordained of God. It hasn't been made up by man, hasn't been invented by man, it's come about by the moving of God. Render therefore to all their Jews, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honour to whom honour. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in all this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Now, this is talking to believers. If you are a believer and you've, you've repented and you've believed in Jesus Christ, you've been granted his mercy, his love. 
and his spirit and he gives you that love he imputes that love within your heart that's the only real way to love and it, what the word of God saying if you love your neighbor as yourself if you do unto others like if you treat others like you'd like to be treated and you do it lawfully you're going to keep all the commandments of the old law which is um, thou shall not commit adultery if you love somebody you're not going to commit adultery you're not going to destroy somebody's family because you love that you love those people as yourself you wouldn't like it done to you so therefore because you love and you've been given that love you wouldn't do it and 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 likewise you wouldn't kill because you know how precious life is and you wouldn't like to be killed and and if you if you if you lost a family member you know how painful that is so why would you do that to somebody else because if you've got love you're going to fulfill these laws you're not you don't you don't need to practice these laws you just naturally by the love of god do them because the because love has fulfilled the law jesus christ has fulfilled the commandments and he establishes the law by love and to receive that love you just, you must be born again that's what this word teaches and you wouldn't steal you wouldn't lie and bear false witness against another person and cause that, that person misery and suffering because you would be loving and you you wouldn't do it not it's not not to say you couldn't do it and and you could fall down and and, and make a mistake and, and and do those things but but you wouldn't if you are faithful thou shall not cover so you'd be content with what you got you'd fear god be grateful and if there be any other commandment, it's briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. And that know in the time that now is a high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we when we believed. The night is far spent. That's talking about the probation of the world. And God has ordained these powers to give to be merciful is mercifully outstretched while men live out their free agency those who choose good and or those who choose evil so he's put these powers to um referee in this probation this constant battle of good and evil the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armour of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, nor in cha chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh, and fulfil the lusts thereof. So you're not living for natural things, your natural desires and your natural lusts, you're living for the love of God. That's what the book of Romans is expressing. That's what Paul's teaching the Romans. Right, let's turn to Timothy. This is another commandment or loving instruction to the believer. And bearing in mind we're a Christian nation, it applies to the church, the believers in Christ. And if you're not a believer, you you couldn't you couldn't deny that these aren't true and good good principles to follow. Right, um, First Timothy chapter two. I exhort exhort is in capital letters. Exhort exhortation means warning to warn, to strictly and firmly warn. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications. That means um, giving your time, giving your heart, supplications, that's, that's pleading, that's almost like appealing. Give your, of all supplications, prayer, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we, we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. And if you look at our nation's history, you know, we've, generally followed that rule um, if you look in the the old the old establishment in parliament they they don't 
openly express what they believe but you can see by some of their fruits that they live by this law and then that and we're commanded that you know everybody should live by this law to be to be uh, thankful for all men to be grateful for life you know and to be content with whatever life we've been given and if you have this knowledge and understanding it gives you peace of mind it puts you in the picture so you're not frustrated by why why things aren't going the way you think they should be going and then then you're not going to react after your lusts after your anger after your feeling unjustly treated you come to the understanding that we're all in the same boat even even politicians are in in this tussle between good and evil so they need prayer they need supplication and if they don't if they don't know that people are doing that they're going to feel quite hopeless and feel on their own and they're likely to stumble and they're likely to fall so they need prayers they need uh, supplications that that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty now if you think of a football match and I can think of many famous football matches where the crowd's just given up and you you imagine being on the pitch if you if you like football I'm not particularly bothered about football but if you're a football team or a cricket team or a rugby team and you're playing for your country and, and you haven't got the support of the crowd behind you you're going to feel up against it on, out and, and then you've got the opposing team and they're all cheering and they're all they're all waiting for you to fall and fail and get their own team across the line like a wind in their sails it's kind of like the same thing if that if, if, if the crowd is behind the team, the captain of the team is lifted, he can lift his team by his example and take take the take the team to victory. So this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. We we'll quickly go to Second Peter just to clarify saying because God because that because because the world's in a probation and that allows men to live out their lives choosing evil or good and um, it God's mercifully stretched out because he desires all men to be saved and come to that knowledge themselves but God will allow free choice he will allow if if the whole, let's use the analogy of the football team again, if the whole supporting crowd give up, right, you know, the Lord's not going to force those people to get, get back up. He's already invited people to get up. But if they give up and, and it becomes slack, there's going to be consequences. If you give up on your government and nation, it's going to become slack and they're, they're likely to throw the towel in and think well let's just go and break the law or you know the public don't care they're just like rioting so why why should we bother it's kind of like it's kind of like has a knock-on effect but if you understand the purpose of life and god's purpose that he's outstretched for all people to be saved and it clarifies it in second peter Chapter 2, let me find it. Uh, right, so it's warning of the end, the last days, how the world will become. Um, I don't know where to start, let me just have a quick read through. Um, find the scripture I want. Anyway, I'll start in... Uh, I'm going to read the whole chapter. But there were false prophets also among the people, even there shall be false teachers among you. It's teaching of the apostasy in the Christian church from the beginning. And it's talking about a time in generations ahead of its ahead of this time, in the time of the apostles. And what what would happen in the last days. And and that 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 re, that apostasy reflects in the world as well, because um 
if the church is apostate, the the nations who are like our nation who are were historically Christian in in profession. So if the Christian if there's Christians go astray, then the government go astray, and then then it then it goes wild. It becomes poisonous, and this is what the prophecy is. Uh, this is what Peter's revealing. Now Peter was just about to go to his death, and he's warning of these events because he could see the Lord gave him the spirit of prophecy. He could see into the future. But there were, f but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. So we speak, speaking of the times to come who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord, that brought them brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So if you look at the Christian church today, there's so many different perverse teachings that are crept in over generations into the church, and it's divided it. Now this comes from Freemasonry, this comes from the Illuminati, this comes from Jesuitism, the Pope, and the influences he has on those other bodies. And those other bodies are just in support of his 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 heart, his his intention. So he's in support of these paganistic satanic bodies. And this is where they got into the church to corrupt it and then lead the people in the church, the laity in the church, astray to to teach these heresies. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So the whole world hates Christianity, because they look at it and go, no thanks. And through covetousness shall they with fain words make merchandise of you. So you can see that example. It's just, you're just a product to be spent like a battery to get money out of you, to inject a bit of life into the purse string, the purses of the corrupt powers who've infiltrated these and dominate these religions whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not for if God not if God spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old persons but saved Noah the eighth person a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So we've had plenty of examples in history of what God, how God judges wickedness, how he corruption and perversion and wildness, and how eventually he lets it, he lets it run, he lets it get fat, and then he slays it. And we are getting fat in this country. You can see that the wickedness is dominating and, and the forces are up against trying to fight it. They're at, the odds are incredible. Look at the odds in World War II. How many Spitfires we had against the, the Luftwaffe. It's the same pattern. Right, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with his filthy conversation of the wicked. So Lot was in a minority, and he was vexed by the predominance of the wicked, perverse uh, LGB community of the day, all having sex with one another, all having orgies, all into this... Uh, paganistic uh, corruption and if you think of the Old Testament when it's, the Lord took Israel into the land he, he, he wanted to sweep it clean of all this pagan practice they were burning children sacrificing and so Israel were he he raised them to be a lawful country and when he come when he come across these powers, he dealt with them through Israel, through the power. He used, he magnified his power through this righteous little branch, and no one could overthrow him when they were being obedient to God. And that's why he swept the land. That's what King David done. He swept the land of all these corrupt, wicked, lawless, pagan, paganistic um, heathens. 
for the righteous man dwelleth among them in seeing, hearing, vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the ungodly, deliver the godly out of temptations, and reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So God will allow men free agency until they're fat, and he'll deliver them over to the day of judgment. And, and we have the prophecy of the day of wrath to come, which is the final judgment on all the Gentile nations, all the corrupt, perverse Gentile nations. And God is faithful. He would deliver deliver the, 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 the God-fearing before that time and during that time. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak even the dignitaries. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusations against them before the Lord. But these are natural brute beasts made, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. That's the rebellious and those who think they're a law unto themselves. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of idolatry and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart that have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Boza who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass, speak, the dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. That's covered in the Old Testament. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. So these, pe these people is what it's talking about, are destitute of the love of God, because they're unbelievers. And their hearts are full of uh, all this. Uh, what what takes the place of um, when love leaves your house? What what takes its place? Where well, it's all these desires, all these perverse, corrupt desires of the flesh, the unnatural order, the fallen nature of man, which is of the devil. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Look at the gay parades, look at the, there's a good example of this uh, wantonness and this rebellion and vanity. You know, they're just uh, justifying their own rebellion. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Well, they prom promised them, them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the word, world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with the, than the beginning. So I believe that's generally talking about the laity who, who are professing believers but have turned away and gone back to the world and they are, their, their state is worse worse off than it was if they would have continued and received Jesus Christ and been born again but they, they they didn't for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them which is to believe in Jesus Christ I don't I don't believe that these people it's referring to did believe they just professed to believe but it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to a wallowing in the mire. So if you look at these religious orders, like the um, Church of England's been infiltrated, compromised by these secret societies and led into paedophilia and all the vices and all the criminal vice that goes with it on, on the chain of the Pope. And you look at the Catholic Church, all the multiple cases of paedophile rings covering it up and it goes right back in history and um, people who, who profess to be ordained in the church and then fall away into this corruption it's saying it would be better that they hadn't been born 
and they've uh, returned like a dog's return to their own vomit. But it's happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that is washed to the wallowing in the mire. So all those, and all those that follow her, follow after these men, then, then they're caught by perverse, corrupt people, and they become entangled with, this, with the corruption. So I wanted to um, read that verse. Um, I'll just finish off a of verse 3. I won't read chapter 3, but the last verse. But beloved, be not... Last two verses, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Now I'll read... I'll go back a bit. Uh, chap, verse 4... Chapter, Second Peter chapter 3 and saying where is the promise of his coming so this is talking about uh, Jesus Christ and the world going well where is he coming you know when is he going to come we, you know he ain't come yet and we can get away with whatever we like knowing uh, verse 3 knowing this first that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust doing whatever they want following their own way thinking that they are right and saying where is the promise of his coming where is Jesus then that's what they're saying for since the fathers fell asleep since generations have passed away that's what it's referring to all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation of the creation for this they willingly are ignorant of, of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. God judged it. So God's ordained the world to have a life, to have a certain period of time for probation, for men to choose good or evil. And, and what the world said is, well, where is God then? Nothing's changed. We can, the, the world goes on as it is. And Jesus hasn't come come yet. Where is he? That's basically what it's referring to. And God's saying, well, you want to consider this. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, preserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So just like the time of the flood, God's going to have another period of judgment, like Sodom and Gomorrah and the flood, and it's called, he's called it the time of Jacob's trouble, the period of wrath, the period of great tribulation. This is what it's referring to. This is coming up the road in our future, in the world's future. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. So mankind tries to think out, outwit God and out think that they're more intelligent than the Almighty because they don't understand his purpose and his uh, time scale and how he's created the earth perfectly and, and because of the fall of man, Jesus Christ coming in really in a time that all may escape and they come to the knowledge of God and be delivered and saved no matter what period they're born into what time they're born into, today, in the past, tomorrow, in the future. That, that um, atonement is in operation. What Jesus finished on the cross is active. And he's, he, um, the Lord is not concerned concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's outstretched for the world. And um, when, when the world falls away into unbelief, you get all this corruption, you get all this perversion, you get all this, all good is now evil, and all evil is now unpopular, and you're a bigot. You're a bigot if you're against homosexuality, you're, you, you go against the status quo and the political correctness if you speak out against any of this evil, uh, immigrate, you know, unlawful immigration, lies, um, corruption, paedophilia, all these vices, you're a conspiracy theorist. If you speak out against Islam, you're an Islamophobe. If you speak out against the Roman Catholic Church, oh, you're, you're being a bit harsh. It's all, 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 in, the, all in the timeless uh, Holy Word, if, if you would 
if you would look. But as the scripture says, people are willingly ignorant. They don't want to know, so they're not going to know. So there's no excuse for people not to know and not to know the Lord God and be saved. So I'm just going to have a pause and I'm going to come back to principles of the law. Right, I'm going to begin the second half. So, dear brothers and sisters, any brothers and sisters listening? Any friends? Any countrymen, fellow countrymen, noblemen? Um, just going to give some thoughts on, on what I've put myself to learn, to learn knowledge. Um, just want to encourage people, it, first in the body of Christ, uh, whatever your circumstance. Um, so I've come to learn the different roles and the different uh, broader picture of, of the church, how there's different callings, there's different responsibilities, there's families, people, who, well, everybody's got their own unique life and to, we're commanded to be grateful, to be content with our life. So whether you're a family member, whether you're a full-time minister, um, just encourage people to apply themselves to learn, to seek knowledge, to seek understanding, to seek the Lord's knowledge and understanding and, and excuse me, and discernment to learn what's true and what, what's actually false and where the devil's machinations are, where misinformation is. With these with these phrases like uh, satanic panic and if you don't believe in all the uh, conspiracy I just encourage you to seek knowledge whether you're a believer or not a believer you know whether you're a civil servant seek knowledge if you're a doctor seek knowledge if you're a policeman seek knowledge I'm going to share the constable life in a minute and it encourages uh, one of the tenants of the police officer is to be informed so to, to encourage people to seek knowledge I was speaking had my um, gas boiler service annual service and I use a um, British gas service now I, I, rem I remember years ago it was all it was all British Gas, British Telecom, the NHS, it was all in-house, it was all looked after by the government. Now it's all in the name of free trade, all in the, oh, it's healthy to have competition. Well, that's a lie to cover over the privatisation and the corruption of our nation and our independence and our government. And... Um, but I still use British Gas because you you've got I think you've got more of a more of a case if you you've got to vet somebody to, to be a registered corgi specialist and then you've got to vet them and allow them into your house. I think with um, British Gas you've got more a chance of getting your money back and they do seem to look after you apart from all the sales rubbish. That I mean I've had four phone calls from British Gas. And the recent phone call I had was um, all to do with um, having a smart meter, but th uh, they've taken different approaches at the different times. So I question, well, my question's been, well, why did they spend all these billions of pounds on promoting this smart meter? Why did they need to promote it? If it was healthy and honest, it would sell itself, but it's not. So they've had to spend billions of pounds. So who are these private investors driving British Gas to get on board with this and driving our government to get on board with this driving our Queen to get to get into 5G you know what what is the compromise that's what I'm asking and it's all to do with the European powers and it gives me a, excuse me but it gives me a case of diarrhea the bad case of diarrhea and I, I spit spit them out you know I really I really uh, don't like these these liars, these heretics um, influencing our law and um, not not considering the value of people's lives and people's rights, our nation's rights and our citizens' rights. And we've been um, infiltrated and overburdened with all this illegal immigration, all this lies and sponsors of immigration. So I want to encourage anybody to seek knowledge so I had this um, gas service and I um, be 
the day before I always get this it's almost like targeted aggravation I get it from all service providers that I'm on and it's like someone in in a secret society's put my name on a list and they give me all this all this um, aggravation excessive phone calls trying to convince me this that or the other then you get all these uh, then I get all these um, fake people in the name they all seem to name they all seem to know what services I use and then they appear that they are that service I get one from one from um, talk talk trying to access I'll claiming I've got a security problem and they're going to shut me down if, if I don't do this and you know it makes me laugh it's so transparent so I get all this targeted aggravation from imposters and the real thing and from British Gas I've had three calls to encourage me to have a gas meter and I've told them well A I don't want, it, want a smart meter because A I, my concerns about how they'll upgrade it and then how someone will have um, covert control of all the devices in your house because all, all devices are being um, smart so everything that's going to be driven and controlled and that be able to access by the smart meter so I don't trust that because it, on the end of it it's a, a corrupt intelligence body the big brother Orwellian who wants, wants their eyes and fingers and everything in the name of big you know, in the name of national security, which is a lie. You know, it's not real national security. It's um, infiltrated national security to spy and control and and to um, behaviour modification through these covert techniques. So if I was to have a smart meter and have all smart devices and I didn't toe the line, then they're going to start... Um, vicariously controlling all your appliances and causing you problems and then they're going to be pumping their voices into your into your head they're going to be radiating your house and, and uh, let, killing you off so the last thing I want in my house is a smart meter and if you're all the smart meters link up one to another and the person on the end of the on, end of the row gets all the um, information from all the others so that one is the one that's communicating to the um, local um, device where it communicates and transports all the information so all the radiation will be in that house and my I live on a close so I'd be the end house of a smart meter getting all the power from all the other smart meters communicating on a regular basis uh, sending out packets of information in in the form of microwave ionizing radiation or non ionizing whatever whatever it is but it but it's been known to cause health problems serious health problems and you only have to do the research by the experts if you look up uh, Jerry Flynn um, Dr Erica Mallory Blythe she's a doctor who's well aware of the lies and the the health effects of uh, um, radio frequency hypersensitivity how people are sensitive more sensitive than others to this uh, technology uh, Barry Trower speaks of the dangers of Wi-Fi on young young women and their ovaries and how it affects generations and causes anomalies and their genetic um, inheritance so the, the ovaries are damaged and it, it affects the, the sensitive uh, uh, water covering, the, protecting the cells and it uh, uh, removes the water from the, the lining of the cell and then the growths form and these growths will form defects in future generations not necessarily the next generation but the generation after and these um, side effects are permanent and um, so all this knowledge can be researched so I, I would just encourage people to um, investigate and research knowledge and um, I got, get this phone call from British Gas on the day that my uh, boiler is going to be serviced and um, I, I hear this old technician, I'm from British Gas and we're uh, engineers in the area which, and we're upgrading, uh, we're upgrade, this is the words, you know, upgrading your meter, would you like an upgrade? and I, I said what have you got behind your back I thought 
I said, is this smart meters? And he went, oh, yeah. And I said, uh, no, I've already told you three times and I've, I've requested you to not ring me again because the answer is going to be the same. No, I don't want a smart meter and this is the reason why. And I say I am hypersensitive to uh, radiation, the, uh, the radio frequencies used in these devices. And then they say, this guy didn't say, but they've said in the past, oh no, they're safe, they're perfectly safe. I said, oh, who's told you that? You know, where did you get your information from? And I said, no, thank you, I don't want a smart meter. You know, and I didn't bother saying, well, look, can you just pass it on that don't ring me again because it's a waste of time because I've done that three times already. So this is the fourth call I've had to try and convince me to have a smart meter. And I wonder, because there's so much investment and so much drive behind it, that these people have been encouraged and they're probably getting they're probably getting little bungs, they're probably getting um extra little incentives and cash incentives to encourage people to have this these smart meters. They want to roll these smart meters out, they want they want all this next generation technology, so all these infiltrated mili secret intelligence agencies can spy on people and play games with people's lives. So my warning and advice is do not have a smart meter. Don't be stupid enough. Research. So that's the day that this engineer came around. And then I get a phone call from the engineer. Um, just to let you know, I'm in the area, I'll be about half an hour. I said, oh, thanks very much for ringing, I'll keep an eye out for you. So he turns up, and then I thought, right, um, you know, see, I'll ask him about smart meters and just start a conversa general conversation with him. And then I offered him the gospel, and he took a gospel tract, and I said, um, I told him about the engineers just ringing me about smart meters and he said, oh, no. I said, I didn't want one. He said, oh no, they're absolutely safe. <laughs> I went, oh, is that what they told you? I said, and he went, oh yeah, that's what, that's what they tell us. I said, did you check that information? And he said, no. And I said, well, I'll, let me give you some uh, people to research for yourself and then you can compare the knowledge that, that these people give you, and these are experts by the way, uh, and these people, one of these people were commissioned to actually try, scientifically try, do a trial to, de to find out if they were safe before the government would um, legislate these uh, smart meters. And of course, if you, you do the research, it was ignored, and they were deemed unsafe and they've been deemed unsafe since the, the, the beginning of their inception. You know, they, they've known this, the health effects this, since the time of radar. And if you do the research, you'll discover this yourself. So I, I encouraged him to look at these, um, these particular experts. Jerry Flynn, he's an Australian military. He was trained in all military aspect, uh, aspects of communication and microwave warfare. And he he done a public appeal in in his country against the dangers of smart meters, and because he couldn't get any media airtime, he had to, had to do it voluntary and go and give talks, just like um, Dr. Erica Mallory Blythe um, had to, you know, had to go and do voluntary talk show that. Uh, give talks and conferences at local councils and try and educate people to fight against this uh, corruption and these lies that have corrupted our government and our nation and convince them that this is safe and it's not safe and these people have know these people and these people have been warned by these people but I wonder what, well why haven't they listened so I, I always encourage people to go and seek knowledge so any anybody listening I'd, I'd encourage you firstly if you don't know these things to to research and then when you've researched you can encourage other people to go and research and that that will give um, free course for this knowledge to gain popular ground in the general ignorance of people and that that can only be a good thing that can only um, 
like the gospel, you know, we're to pray to have free course of the gospel, but I think you can include free course of the truth within the gospel, you know, the free course of knowledge to the people who've been lied to and kept in ignorance, because people, there is people that are generally ignorant who would like to know these things, but perhaps, like if you think of doctors, a lot of doctors don't have time to research current medical information or whether they to check what they've been qualified to practice and they haven't got the opportunity to um, research and double check and evaluate what they've been taught to make an adjustment because they're pressured to uh, not have the time not have the spare time they've got family so they haven't got the time to do this so I'd encourage anybody to make time and research the areas of these things, uh, microwaves, uh, paedophile rings, satanic ritual abuse, all the areas of that are covered over you, that you that come under the title of you're a tinfoil hat wearer or you're a conspiracy theorist, all those whitewashing brush strokes, you know, to break down that illusion that, that it will me make a difference for good in the world where you can educate people. So every time I like to um, have the opportunity. I like to point people in in the area where I I I've researched and I know, and I believe that I can give people the opportunity to go and um, research for themselves. Um, even people when I see engineers at the cell towers, I always like to ask them what have they been told about the safety of it, and they've all been told the same lie, like these engineers oh it's safe don't worry about it and I say well whose word are you taking that, that they've just been told that by their employees so they've been trained of false information and and the people who are um, teaching them it's safe are probably believing some other lie above them oh no it's safe but have they checked and um, done a, a reasoned it through and examined all the evidence themselves to come up with a, a, a just a just me measurement of what is the truth because when you compare it and you've got to cut you've got to use your discernment and cut through all the misinformation because you'll get um, people uh, giving part knowledge with a load with a load of twists like the flat earth theory and all. a lot of these things are deliberately pumped into the media into independent media and the mainstream media to throw people off the scent so you have to use your discernment and you have to research a broad area of research to uh, evaluate what it is you're researching to learn and to be edified and to have an increase of knowledge and then that knowledge you have you can't just rely on that you got to realize that um, you're never going to have a full knowledge and you have to re-evaluate the knowledge you you do have so um, I just wanted to encourage people to um, seek knowledge seek understanding that, that you may be equipped to you know make a difference for good so I'm going to just share my uh, quickly go through some points with the coronation oath and basically what I've put myself to learn and understand. I'm not, as I say, I'm not an expert, but I'm just going to cover a few points. Basically what the coronation oath was for is against the infiltration of this uh, Roman Catholic popery who tries to corrupt powers and dictate and uh, lord it over on every nation it gets its mitts on. So from the kicking out of King Charles, Charles I, because he was a dictator and he was a Catholic so he was his allegiance was to the Pope not to the British people so there had to be a lot of bloodshed he had to be put down and then the, um, the coronation of uh, was um, instituted by well actually it was uh, William I think um, William and Mary William of Orange who come over and kick the Catholics out. Um, but anyway, this is the coronation oath based on, you have to research it because I'm only going to give a, a few a few points. 
I'm not going to give, um, <laughs> I don't understand it all, but I'm just going to give a few points. It, it basically comes from the Bill of Rights, which we'll look at in a minute. So you can get these online, it's the coronation oath from the government website. But basically there's a lot of a lot of detail that was being omitted from the actual Bill of Rights. But basically a number of statutes govern the declaration of oaths which must be made by a new monarch. The Bill of Rights, 1688, required the monarch to make a solemn public declaration of non-belief in, in the Roman Catholic faith to be made by a new king. And if you do your research and history, you'll understand why. In 1910, the wording was changed in pre preparation for the coronation of George V. In order to reduce offensiveness in to Catholics, the oath was re rephrased to express adherence to the Protestant faith instead of non-adherence to the Catholic faith. Another wishy-washy compromise, in my opinion. The accession declaration, as it is known, is normally delivered at the next state opening of Parliament. The text of the, access the accession declaration is laid down in the Accession Declaration Act. Oh, excuse me. 1910 is as follows. So, there's the... You know, get you can download this and read this in your own leisure. But... But there's the out, out, outlining of the oath. Uh, the Act of Union 1707 requires a sovereign to make a declaration and take an oath to preserve the Church of Scotland. This is done at the first meeting of the Privy Councillors immediately following the accession. The Coronation Act 1689 requires a monarch to make a separate declaration to maintain established Anglican Protestant Church during his or her coronation ceremony. So it's all the guidelines within in the oath. But basically it's just to swear faith to the Protestant faith as it was lawfully established and to denounce Roman Catholicism and um, anything to do with the Pope. Uh, and that's all the Right. Coronation oath. The basis for the coronation oath which forms part of the coronation ceremony is enshrined in statute in the Coronation Oath Act 1689. The Act required that King William and Queen Mary as joint monarchs to swear an oath during the coronation ceremony, the Act of Settlement 1701. I haven't got that. And this Accession Declaration Act 1910 make a statutory requirement on the monarch to take the coronation oath. So every, every British monarch has to take this oath and it's permanent, it can't be undone. It's lawfully uh, everlasting and lawfully binding. The text of the oath as set down in 18, 1689 Act is appended to this note. The text includes a promise that they would to the utmost of their power to Maintain the Lords of God, the true profession of the Gospel, according to the Word of God, and the Protestant Reformed religion established by law. So that's the church and state in our country. And preserve unto the bishops and clergy of this realm of the churches committed to their charge all such rights and privileges by law do or shall appertain unto them or any of them. It is worth noting that the coronation oath has been modified without statutory authority. So it was changed without lawful permission. The present Queen swore a slightly different version of the oath in 1689 version. It has include, included a promise to maintain the established Protestant religion in the United Kingdom. But it doesn't override, this is one point I'd like to make, it doesn't override the common law of the uh, Bill of Rights. It still includes a promise to maintain the established Protestant religion in the United Kingdom. The text of the oath taken by Elizabeth II in 1953 is also appended to this note. Right, so here's all the, the Crown's duty towards the subject. The essential duties of the Crown towards the subject are now now to be found expressed in the terms of the oath which every monarch is required to take before or at the coronation. The duties imposed by the coronation oath are 
I've highlighted just a few. To govern the peoples of the United Kingdom, Great Britain and Northern Ireland and the dominions etc belonging or pertaining to them according to their respective laws and customs. To cause law and justice in mercy to execute in all judgments to the monarch's power. You know, these are all worth considering. To maintain the laws of God, the true profession of the gospel, and the Protestant reform religion established by law to the utmost of the sovereign's power. So, um, just want to make a point about the profession of the gospel. Now, is that the epistles of the New Testament or the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? It doesn't clearly quite state, um, but I take it to the the professing Christian is to the the New Testament, the 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 uh, which includes the epistles as well, to maintain and preserve inavoid inviolable and the settlement of Church of England and its doctrine, worship, discipline, and government as by law established in England, and to preserve unto the bishops and clergy of England and and to the churches they commit to their charge all such rights and privileges as by law do or shall attain to them or any of them. And there's a bit about differences for Scotland. Right, so... Right. You can read this in your own time. I just want to highlight some some main points. So basically that was the the coronation oath. Here's the actual uh, this is the this is the original oath I think. So there's the procedure and it goes through it and then we get to a point. Will you to the utmost of power maintain the laws of God, the true profession of the gospel and the pro pro Protestant reform religion established by law and will you preserve unto the bishops and clergy of this realm and the churches committed to their charge all such rights and privileges as by law do or shall appertain unto them or any of them and the queen promises or the king and agrees and, and, and takes their oath so this is the um, difference that, that was changed this is what, uh, for Queen Elizabeth's coronation so something changed, uh, but she still um, professed to maintain the Protestant form of religion established by law. The Archbishop asked, Will you solemnly promise to swear to govern the peoples of the United Kingdom of Great Britain, Northern Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Union of South Africa, Pakistan and Ceylon? and of your possessions and the other territories to any of them belonging or pertaining according to their respective laws and customs. The Queen swears she does. And then later on, will you to the utmost of your power, <coughs> excuse me, maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel? Will you to the utmost of your power maintain in the United Kingdom the pr Protestant reform religion established by law? And the Queen promised all this I promised to do. So I wanted to highlight those points because I'm going to read some um, actual points of the main Bill of Rights. So I'm going to go to the Bill of Rights. So the Queen's promise to be loyal to the oath. So I'm going to highlight some just some points. And it gives you a bit of background of why the Bill of Rights was initiated or done. Right, and it was because of this man. <clears throat> and this roots from um, what Oliver Cromwell had to fight against King Charles. So after King James's death, I think King James II took, took the throne of England and tried to re-establish the Catholic powers back into Great Britain. So William and Mary had to come over, uh, William the Conqueror come over and booted him off. And that was all... Um, done by the lawful powers of our nation in um, alliance with William and he come over and done the business. Whereas the late King James II by the assistance of diverse evil's counsellors speaking about the, the Jesuits and the Roman Catholic Church, judges and ministers employed by him, all the covert corrupt powers who are loyal, who are closet Catholic 
pro-European, the pro-European one world, you know, agenda running the whole world rather than independent nations having their own freedoms. That's what that's what the EU is about. It doesn't say that, it's not gonna openly state that, but that's what that's what its heart and nature of that beast is. To endeavour to subvert and it extirpate the Protestant religion and the laws and liberties of the kingdom. So this is what it's all about. So there's there's all the laws that were written to pro it's basically to protect the rights, to be fair, to be merciful and to 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 live rightly. Which is what all the Catholic powers are opposed against. And whereas I said late King James the Second having abdicated the government, so it's like King Charles, kicks out the government <laughs> and the throne being thereby vacant. So he was removed. His Highness the Prince of Orange, whom it hath pleased Almighty God to make the glorious instrument of delivering this kingdom from popery and arbitrary power, dictatorial Tory powers, did, by the advice of the Lord's spiritual and temporal and divers principal persons of the commons. So that's anyone who has a common interest in, in British law. So today that will be the, the Church of England, should be the Church of England and the House of Commons and the House of Lords. By the advice of the Lord's spiritual and temporal and divers principal persons of the commons, caused by letters to be written to the Lord's spiritual and temporal being Protestants, and other letters to the several countries, cities, universities, boroughs, and sink ports for the choosing of such persons to represent them as were of right to be sent to Parliament to meet and sit at Westminster upon the 2 and 20th day of January in, in this year. So all these people were called to Parliament to put forward this law, the Bill of Rights, to meet and sit in Westminster upon the 2 and 20th day of January in this year, 1688, the old style date in order to such an establishment as that their religion, laws and liberties might not again be in danger of being subverted upon which letters and elections have been accordingly made. So it's to keep those powers out, like to keep Hitler out, who is um, loyal to the... Ca if, you, if you research history and the Jesuits and the Catholic Church and the rat runs and all, all, all the machinations and the covert espionage and read uh, if you read this book the devil's chessboard it covers all the military um, intrigue in the and the German Nazi loyalties of this guy Alan Dulles who was head of the CIA and this is the infiltration of all the the, Brit the the military intelligence agencies and how they get in and they're, they're all loyal to the, the Pope and and that sort of power and the secret societies and all all those bodies serve one another and they, they can cross over and utilize and use them for their own ends they've all got a similar selfish vain end and um, it was to kick them out and if you read um, that book, it gives you it gives you an insight into the the machinations of these Nazi powers. These people, because uh, uh, Alan Dulles was um, invested in in the uh, in, in German interests, and just like um, what this guy revealed, uh, Michael Shrimpton, a spy hunter, the DVD they're called, they're a German intelligence agency which goes back centuries either, even uh, precedes Hitler's time and it's to serve this Pope in disrupting because uh, don't forget the, the whore rides on these these powers, they work together, they're parasites and they will all work hand in hand. It's very, it's a very complicated web. Then you've got um, apostate Jews involved, and that's what the elders of um, the tenants of the uh, elders of Zion. It was to put the blame on the Jews because um, a lot, some of the um, uh, Jews were apostate. 
and um, the hist uh, what, what's the guy's name Rabbi Marvin Ankle Antelman he wrote a history of the corruption of the of the apostate Judaism and the Frankists and the Bolshevik revolution all going back through the the apostasy of the Judaic faith just like the Christianity it's been apostatized and it's all been corrupted by these same hands and through these same vehicles and instruments of secret societies and then you've got these um, corruption in the, the Talmud and then you've got the Kabbalah the Kabbalists and then you've got all these secret apostate sects and secret societies set up in the Jewish realm and then you've got it in the Gentile realm with like the skull and bones, the Illuminati. And the Illuminati was actually started by a Jewish Jesuit priest. So you've got all this crossover. And the uh, Protocols of Zion was a false document. It's accurate in what it's stating that the Masonation is, but it's inaccurate to, in it's putting all the blame and sticking it on the back of the good, good Jewish people. But if you study history and study the facts that the, the, the Jewish body um, excommunicate the likes of these people from their society. Um, who was it? Uh, Henry Kissinger. He was, he's Jewish. He's been excommunicated. Um, people like um, the guy who done the Jesuits. Oh, what was his name? Um, oh... Loyota, um, who, well, whatever his name is, he was excommunicated. All these, and then they practiced uh, Kabbalism, which is witchcraft, which is uh, spiritual, spiritualism, peeping, divining, sacrificing, and then, th then the machination was to, their belief was to um, do evil, to bring in, the, hasten in their Messiah to come. So if their, their apostate belief was, it would, it, it, if you do evil and corruption and tyranny, that will spend up all the evil in the world and that will hasten the coming of the Messiah. And then you got the, um, when the Illuminati were formed, that would recruit loads of Gentile powers. And then you've got the Freemasons from that. That's all the Gentile world. And then you've got the Jews entering into Freemasonry and the Illuminati. But it's not the the good Torah-believing Jews or the good Torah-believing Jews have excommunicated these people. So it's not a Jewish conspiracy. It's a Gentile conspiracy with a mixture of apostate Jews, apostate Christians, and a general body of people who lust for power and money and that all roots into the European Union the Bilderbergers and all all those elite powers who want to dominate they're all self-serving they're all serving the same self and who's sitting on top of that self is the Catholic Church and this is what our nation's been up against through through history if you would know it but um, all these powers have in infiltrated our education system and they don't teach you this in school anymore. They teach you lies. So you've got to go and find out all this information yourself. So in my basic understanding, I put myself to learn this knowledge and root out. And I'm still learning. I've still got um, areas to research and I'll never grasp it all. It's It's so... There's so much, it, it's so deeply rooted in history, all this intrigue and all this uh, counter-espionage counter and it all ties into military intelligence and infiltrating nations and their governments, getting their arm behind their back to, to force the agenda of this one world dominant power. And sitting on that power, it's in Revelation 17 and 18, is the whore, which is the Roman Catholic powers, the Pope. Who sits on the beast, rides the whore, riding the beast, and that's what will hasten in the Antichrist. Not, not, not the Messiah. The Messiah's been, and is, but he will come at the end and rescue Israel and save the nation of Israel from these corrupt powers. All the poor Jews in in Israel today get the bad rap. rap. 
and they've got all, all the corrupt powers have got power over the media to spin what you know it's all the poor old Palestinians where well, the Palestinians are all sponsored and pushed out of their own country and used as political tools to um, fight against the Jews to fight the Jews have only fought hit back they've never gone out and um, forces their own way they've and if they have it's been through the influence of this um, the infiltration of the Zionist movement and corrupting the meaning of Zionism so it's all all to do with this popery you know just like the um, Inquisition and the Crusades it's all the same pattern of behavior if you research and study by advice of the Lord Spiritual Temple Divers, principal persons of the commons, cause letters to be written to the Lord Spiritual and Temporal being Protestants, and other letters to the several countries, universities. So they called all these people to Parliament to enact this law in order to such an establishment as that their religion, laws and liberties might not again be in danger or being subverted upon which letters elections have been accordingly made. And thereupon the said Lords, spiritual and temporal and commons, pursuant of their respective letters and elections, being now assembled in the full and free representative of this nation, taking into their most serious consideration the best means for attaining the ends aforesaid, do in the first place as their ancestors in like case have usually done, for the vindicating, asserting their ancient rights and liberties declare. And that goes back to the Magna Carta. Right. So that's the battle. That's what's been dealt with again and again and again. And we're at that impasse again because that those same powers are knocking on the door with this Brexit. And I pray that our government doesn't compromise. Right, here's, here's the um, effects of the, the Bill of Rights. And that the oaths hereby mentioned be taken by all persons of whom the oaths have allegiance and supremacy might be required by law instead of them, and that the said oaths of allegiance and supremacy be abrogated. So, anyone in the government, the Queen, the coronation oath, the government, any civil servant, the police, have to swear this same oath. This is where it's rooted in, and it's all this. It, this is what's been removed from the public. It's just a, it's just a casual thing that they all go through traditionally. But do they really know the root of it and the essence of it and the purpose and the the severity of why they swear these oaths? I think that they've lost sight of it. And I think that these people should should have a, you know, they're far more capable of learning history and recalling history than I could because they've had a better education. I've had a, a watered down comprehensive education, which isn't isn't worth anything, in my opinion, apart from the experience, the life experience. I A B do swear that I do from my heart adore abhor, detest and adjure as impious and heretical this damnable doctrine and position the, that prince is excommunicated or deprived by the Pope or any authority of, of the See of Rome may be disposed or murdered by their subjects or any other whatsoever. And I do declare that no foreign prince, person, prelate, state or continent have or ought to have any jurisdiction, power, superiority, preeminence or authority, ecclesiastical or spiritual within this realm, so help me God. So they got to swear that anyone to do with Roman Catholicism, any, anything, any, on any level, it's not just um, it's not just saying because you're a Catholic. It's saying if your allegiance to Rome, if your allegiance to Europe, you're breaking the Bill of Rights, you're breaking the common law, and the, and you're breaking the coronation oath. If you compromise to these powers, you're breaking the oath that you've sworn in office, and you are under under condemnation. So I only pray that there. That there are lawful powers that are, will deal with this, and if if not, we're in a very dangerous time. And you can only imagine. And and 
and these laws in my opinion are being broken they are being um, treated lightly and walked all over by, m by a majority of all of that's concerned in our law and this this stems from the top all the way down to the law to the police because they have to swear the oath as well right upon which their said majesties did accept the crown whoops oh did accept the crown and royal dignity of the kingdoms of England, France and Ireland and the dominions thereunto belonging according to the resolution and desire of this uh, of the said lords and commons contained in this said declaration and thereupon their majesties were pleased that the said lords spiritual and temporal, temporal and commons that covers all aspects of the um, offices in power Upon their majesties were pleased that the said Lord spiritual and temporal and commons being the two houses of parliament, so that's the lords and the commons, should continue to sit and with their majesties royal concurrence, make effectual provision for the settlement of the religion, laws and liberties of this kingdom so that the same for the future might not be in danger again of being subverted to which the said Lord spiritual and temporal and commons did agree and proceed to act accordingly well it asks the question well why don't you ever hear this why don't you ever hear them repeating it why isn't November why is November the 5th not celebrated as as it was it's just bonfire night you know that act was passed to remind the public and give them the right to have a bonfire to remember this act or this reason for this act and that is the Roman Catholic Church and its ancient machinations against all liberties, rights and freedoms now in pursuance of the premises the said Lord spiritual and temporal and commons in Parliament assembled for the ratifying, confirming and establishing the said declaration and the articles, clauses, matters and things therein contained by f the force of law made in due form by authority of parliament do do pray that it may be declared and enacted that all the singular rights and liberties asserted and claimed in the said declaration are the true ancient and indubitable rights and liberties of the people of this kingdom and so shall be esteemed it's not esteemed allowed adjudged ad, adjudged deemed and taken to be and that all and every the practitioners aforesaid shall be firmly and strictly strictly holden and observed as they are expressed in the said declaration and all officers and ministers whatsoever shall serve their majesty and their successors according to the same in all to come and the said lord spiritual and temporal come and seriously considering how it hath pleased almighty god in the marvellous providence and merciful goodness to this nation to provide and preserve their said majesty's royal persons most happily to reign over upon us upon the throne of their ancestors as i read in uh, romans 13 how god was ordained the powers and he's sovereign so it, what we have is ordained of God whether you like it or believe it or not it, it's a fact that it's ordained of God and this was a result of uh, corruption the Roman Catholic Church and what our nation had to go through all the blood that was spilled all the lives that were lost how it corrupted religion how it corrupted government and law the said Lord spiritual temper common seriously considering how it hath pleased Almighty God in his marvellous providence and merciful goodness to this nation to provide and to preserve their said majesty's royal persons most happily to reign over us upon the throne of their ancestors for which they render unto him from the bottom of their hearts their humblest thanks and praises you know you just see how how things have changed how it's how it's lightly dismissed because we've got an unbelieving parliament who swear these oaths and they don't even believe them they walk all over it and treat it lightly give it a casual glance and get on with their business you know and you know, I wonder how many in there are actually humble and faithful to their their oaths that they, they took it's evident 
I mean, the truth that you know, by their fruits you should know them. The truth speaks for them itself, and praises do firm, do truly firmly, and and the general public are the same. So, we're in us, we're in the soup. The nation is in the soup, you know, in this or the swamp. Do firmly, assuredly, and in sincerity of their hearts, think and do hereby recognise, acknowledge, and declare the king that King James the Second, having abdicated the government and their Majesties, having accepted the crown and royal dignity, as aforesaid, the said Majesties did become were are, and of right ought to but be by the laws of this realm, our sovereign sovereign liege, Lord and Lady King and Queen of England, France and Ireland, and the dominions thereunto belonging in and to those pro princely persons the royal state crown and dignity of the said realms of all honours styles titles regalities prerogatives powers jurisdictions and authorities to the same belonging and pertaining as most fully rightfully and entirely invested and incorporated united and annexed and for preventing all questions and divisions in this realm by reason of any you know <laughs> Preventing all questions and divisions, there's no debate about it. It's quite clear why we have the, the coronation oath and the oath that all parliaments swear, and accordingly they, they, they repeat it every time or certain times that they sit in parliament. So, what, why? What, it's totally contradictory to what they're swearing. And for preventing all questions and divisions in this realm by reason of any pretended titles to the crown, and for preserving a certainty in the succession thereof, in and upon which the unity, peace, tranquillity and safety of this nation doth under God, wholly consistent demand. So if and just make a point, just because the Lord's ordained powers, it doesn't mean that those powers are right. It means if the Lord ordains these powers and they're corrupt, it's because the Lord's allowed them. Because people haven't had the knowledge, and so therefore it's just become slack. So if that's what people choose, that's what people will get, and that's what we've got. But the, the, you can see how far removed it is from the original heart and law, and the reason for that law being uh, ordained. And what it was up, and clearly what it was fighting against, which has been written out of history by these covert infiltration of our nation, government, powers, and education and law, and the administration of that law, how slack it's turned the whole nation, and it's blinkered it and blinded it against the, the original salty reason of why this law was there in the first place. So. It, it need, people need to go back to this and investigate it themselves but I suspect that because people don't believe they won't give pay it any credence they won't see the, um, the seriousness of it and the um, gravity of the meaning of this and why because they switch off oh it's to do with religion you know um, and you can see that religion although Although church and state isn't really biblical, but because of the way history's unfolded, it's still ordained of God, and the people of that time were forced to write this law to protect our rights and freedom. Uh, if you read uh, James, uh, James uh, chapter 5, verse 12 but above all things my brethren speaking to the church speaking to uh, mainly speaking to the scattered tribes of Israel, Israel who are believers but it applies to to the church but above all things my brethren swear not neither by heaven neither by earth neither by any other oath but let ye a be a and ye nay be nay lest ye fall into condemnation so even in, in our law there's been a compromise against the gospel but because if you if you study the reason, it's still ordained of God and it's still lawful and it's still right. And that's why our laws were implemented. That's why Parliament is in its current form today. And that's why the Crown and Parliament go hand in hand. And it's ordained of God. 
but it has become slack and um, you can see evidently by the um, by the powers who the people in in the powers just because the law's right but the people in that law are slack and they need uh, they need to repent they need to to re go back to the go back to the the reason and it, and I, I personally think that they should um, be more honest of what's going on that I, I personally believe that they're too frightened and they just get on whether they're totally deceived and so drunk in their own importance or whether whether they know what the status quo is but they keep they keep a lid on it and they keep the public in ignorance I think that there, there should be some honesty and transparency not in a political washing sense but in a truthful sense and a meek sense of what is what they actually know what what is this corruption what is this um you know the law should be dealing with these um, paedophile rings which seem to be they go all out to keep a lid on it and 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 because they're compromising it gives it gives a free course to the enemy and it gives power to the enemy and that chokes and sits on the general ignorance of the public and that's why it's unjust and it's not for the people you know the government aren't for the people it's clearly evident by their fruits for preserving certainty in the succession thereof in and upon which the unity peace tranquility and safety of this nation doth under god wholly consist and demand the said Lord Spiritual and Temporal and Commons do beseech their majesties that it may be enacted, established and declared that the crown and regal government of the said kingdoms and dominions with all the singular and singular the premise thereunto belonging and, and, and pertaining should be and continue to their said majesties and the survivor of them during their lives. So it, the law protects the, in, the, the, in, the succession of kings and queens to be to be loyal to this law and to convey that communicate that to all the nation from the top down um, exercise regal power government extend by man's name during their joint lives that after their decease the said crown and premises shall be and remain to the heirs of the body of her majesty so it should it should have continued in that bloodline and for default such issue to her royal highness the prince uh, the princess anne of denmark and the heirs of the body of his said majesty and there unto the said lord spiritual and temporal and commons do in the name of all people aforesaid most humbly and faithfully submit themselves their heirs and prosperities forever forever and do faithfully promise that they will stand to maintain and defend their said majesties and also the limitation and succession of the crown hereunto specified and contained to the utmost of their powers with their lives and estates against all persons whatsoever that, that shall attempt anything to the contrary there you go And whereas it have been found by experience that it is inconsistent with the safety and welfare of this Protestant kingdom to be governed by a Popish prince or by any king or queen marrying a papist, the said, the, the said Lord Spiritual and Temporal and Commons do further pray that it may be enacted that all and every person and persons that is are or shall be re reconciled to or shall hold communion with see it's any it's not only married you know that, that this is what they admit it's anyone who has an association if you read Corinthians 2 6 you know what 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 fellowship has a a believer with an infidel a non-believer what what association does a protestant have with a pope with a roman catholic absolutely none they're opposing ideologies in a religious sense and the and, and it's unlawful look at tony blair they're catholics how many catholics are in power how many catholics are serving in the police how many catholic you know it's Oh, don't offend the Catholics. Well, the Catholics are the offence. 
because they're serving, they're not speaking out against their heretical leader. Because they're not believers, they're not Protestant, is to protest against that heresy, unlawfulness, and they're not doing it because they don't believe. Do further pray that it may be enacted that all and every person, persons that is, are, or shall be reconciled, or to, or should hold communion with the See or Church of Rome, and shall profess a Popish religion, or shall marry a Papist. So it's not only marry, it's to have association with them. Whether that's in politics, whether that's in law, whether that's in fellowship, shall be excluded and be forever incapable to inherit, possess or enjoy the crown and government of this realm and island and the dominions thereunto belonging or any part the same or to have, use or exercise any regal power so they can't be in office, authority or jurisdiction within the same so they can't serve within any lawful position in our nation, this is the law so anyone loyal to the Catholic, whether they're closet Catholics or not, they have no business and no right, according to our law, to be serving for our law because they're corrupt and they're loyal to the corrupt power, the heretic of Rome, the Pope and the EU. And who's crying? Look at all the people crying out against it, you know, and all the unbelief that follow after the voice. These are corrupt devils. And in all, in every such case or cases, the people of these realms shall be and ha are hereby absolved of their allegiance on your bikes. And said, and the said crown and government shall from time to time descend to and be enjoyed by such persons or persons being Protestant, as should have inherited and enjoyed the same in case the said persons or persons to be reconciled. So every blessing of the, of the royal crown, the person who sits on the throne, who lives for the righteousness, mercy and fear of God for the people and everyone who is a subject under that shares the same privilege and should have inherited and enjoyed the same in case the said persons or persons so reconciled holding communion or professing to marry aforesaid were naturally dead and that every king and queen of this realm who at any time hereafter shall come to him succeed in the imperial crown of this kingdom shall on the first day of the meeting of first parliament next after his or her coming to the crown sitting in his or her throne in the house of peers in the presence of the lord commons therein assembled or at his or her coronation before such persons or persons who shall administer the coronation oath to him or her at the time of his or her making the said oath which shall first happen must subscribe and audibly repeat the declaration mentioned in the statute made in the 13th year of the reign of King Charles II entitled Act for the Effectual Preserving the King's Person and Government by disabling Papists from sitting in either House of Parliament. But it shall happen that such King or Queen upon his or her succession to the Crown uh, of this realm shall be under the age of 12 years and every such king or queen shall make subscribe and order to repeat the same direction at his or her coronation or the first day of the meeting of the first parliament as aforesaid which shall first happen after such king or queen shall be attained the age of 12 years and all which majesties are contended and pleased shall declare and act and establish by authority of this present parliament and shall stand remain and be the law of this realm forever Right, so my understanding is, other than the coronation oath, it should, it should be upheld by Parliament and it should be repeated. And I believe that was saying, not only at the coronation oath, but at certain periods thereafter in the sitting of, of Parliament. So it should be reenacted, it should be repeated, it should be brought out to the fore. Like, like a believer's told to renew their mind in the word of God. They, the government should be renewing their mind in the law. And, you know, but they're not. You can see by their fruits. It's just a joke. Look at, um, look at the opposition. Look at the opposition parties who are all want to get Brexit. Oh, absolutely no deal. Well, that's what was voted for. Um, Jeremy Corbyn, you know, he's... Re gone all out to get new deal, keep new deal off the table. That's what all the digging of the hills was in, to get the no deal off the table. Well, that's exactly what I put at the beginning of this, this film was voted for unequivocally, unequivocally. In, 
or out. And look at what they're doing, they're breaking the law quite clearly. So anyone, anyone can take them to court in the law should be taking them to court. You know, they took Boris Johnson to court when he paroled Parliament. Well, he should take them to court back. But, it, but is he guilty himself? So let's, let's just finish this. Right, forever. So it's in, in law forever. And it, and it be further declared and enacted by the authority aforesaid, further declared and enacted, that's what I was saying on a regular basis, that from and after this present session of Parliament, no dispensation by non obstante or of or to any statute or any part thereof shall be allowed. So they're not allowed. They're not allowed. They are not allowed in our Parliament. So are they, who are they loyal to? EU, EU represents papacy, because the pope, the pope has a, he's a member of the European Union, and it's illegal for our country to be in the EU according to the Bill of Rights in the first place, and the EU aren't going to speak out against the pope because all the nations worship the pope, they all pay homage and allegiance to the Pope. You just look at all the state visits the Pope gets. They're all loyal to the Pope, the heretic and the law the lawless one. But that same shall be held void and of no effect. So our law has no effect except a dispensation be allowed within such statute. And except in such cases shall be specially provided by for by one or more bill or bills be passed during this present session of Parliament. So it only, it only applies in special circumstances that were made at that Parliament, and that, that Parliament has given us this law. Prote our law is protected by that Parliament. And they all claim to hold to the law, and it suits them, but they're all breaking the law. They should, they should, they should, have, a, they should have a look in the mirror and be pr pulled up on this provided that no charter of grant pardon granted before the free 30th day of October in the year of our Lord 1689 so too late you can't change it shall be anyways impeached or invalidated by this act but that same shall be and remain of the same force and effect in law and no other than as if this act had never been made so there we go I wanted to clarify those points about the association to Roman Catholicism is a no-no whether you're a, whether you're the Queen whether you're the Parliament House of Lords whether you are a member of the Commons or whether you are a civil servant you shouldn't be you shouldn't be allowed to serve in office being a nurse because you, you 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 could be poisoning children or a doctor because you could be serving the Pope's agenda or a teacher because you could be teaching heresy or a member of Parliament because you would be trying to corrupt the law quite simple that's why that Bill of Rights was passed and in action right the off and let's have a look at the Office of Constable right, I'm just going to quickly go through this because this is running into a lot of time. So the office of Constable Oath. Now are the 101 police constables? Right, is our current police force predominantly swear this oath and what this oath means? Every constable is an independent legal entity, the public guarantee of impartiality. So are they serving the public or are they serving their office the corrupt officers within infiltrated within the law? And if you look at, if you read this book, I'm not saying trust everything information in this book, but if you read what this gentleman's researched, Michael Shrimpton, and he was an, he's an attorney, and he has connections to the intelligence world. Um, so if you research his information and other information like that, of the infiltration of this military German intelligence, who apparently runs the top of our military into MI5, MI6 
and it, it, it's got into the top seats if you look at John Wedge's testimony that the only people that they prosecute is a lot people he, he, he's, he used the phrase they only pick the low fruit they'll only go after the low the low branches so he he knows that corruption is right up the top and they were protect, protecting the law was protecting these organized paedophile rings in that famous square that famous apartment building next to parliament where all these par parliamentarians were going for sex sessions with children that's what Jimmy Savile was he was a pimp of children and who's replaced him? You've got Jeffrey Epstein, he's a similar component in this organised paedophile network, worldwide paedophile network, and it's protected. Who's, who's sitting on the top of that? Well, that's the Pope. He allows it, he's supporting it, it all supports his favour to overturn law and order. Public guarantee of impartiality partiality officers of the crown operate independent of undue influence inf interference and with a personal responsibility which requires a unique per type of person and commitment so it's all lip service today i i doubt if there's many legitimate police police officers and if there are they're up against a lot of corruption and they're stopped they are blocked from lawfully acting what is the office of constable? Every sworn police officer in England and Wales is a constable, irrespective of rank. So there's no rank. A constable is a constable, and they have lawful right to independently act with what, within their jurisdiction of having powers to arrest criminals. Doesn't matter what level that is, whether the Queen's breaking the law, a constable has the, the independent authority to arrest them and, and act on the law lawfully. Are they doing that? Well, evidently not. On appointment, each police officer makes a declaration, and this goes up to the, the Bill of Rights, the coronation oath, because they, serve, they, they, they swear allegiance to the Queen and the law, the common law, not the state laws, the common law, not what their office, not what their boss tells them, because they're independent constables. An appointment each police officer makes a declaration to faithfully discharge the duties of the officer constable in England and Wales. Police, police, swear, police officers swear an allegiance to the monarch. This is to ensure the separation of power, political independence of the officer constable. The officer constable means a police officer has the additional legal powers of arrest and control of the public given to him or her directly by a sworn oath and warrant. These are not delegated powers simply because they have been employed as an officer and officers are not employees. They are not agents of the police force, police authority or government. Those who hold the officer constable are servants of the crown, which, which is the... The, protect, the protector of the Bill of Rights, or should be. Each sworn constable is an independent legal officer and each police officer has personal liability for their actions or inaction. So they're liable for their law breaking, for not doing what they should be doing. The chief officer of the force to which the constable is attached also has a responsibility of, cor of corporate responsibility. So he's got a responsibility for if the whole lot fails, he's re they're responsible. They got a part to play in that. Swearing allegiance to the crown, I do solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will, I I will well and truly serve the queen and the officer constable with fairness, integrity, diligence, and impartiality, upholding fundamental human rights and according equal respect to all people. And that I will, to the best of my power, cause the peace to be kept and preserved. And prevent all offences against people and property. And that while I continue to hold the said office, I will be, to the best of my skill and knowledge, discharge all of the duties thereof faithfully. According to law. Remember what the law is? Just read it. So, you know, it's all right holding you can't hold to one bit and not the other the strengths of the officer constable 
police officers must be allowed to police with discretion so they've got free reign over whatever crimes they detect they have free discretion to act in their office to take on those uh, um, the jurisdiction of uh, challenging that criminality by the law that they've been ordained and uh, empowered to enact upon. Discretion is the bedrock of policing. It allows reasoned and fair decisions based on experience to be taken by police officers without the need to take a course of action merely to satisfy targets. So they're there to, to police the law. Police officers cannot legally be instructed to arrest a person. It is a decision they must take for themselves. So they're independent acting components and they've all got that same authority, no more authority than the chief constable, than their sergeant, that they all have the same power. Using their experience, knowledge and discretion to take the most appropriate course of action to fulfil their function as officers of the Crown. Police officers have authority under the Crown for the protection of life, property, maintenance or order, prevention and detection of crime and prosecution of offenders against the peace like Catholics, like the Pope, like lawbreakers in the government, like paedophile rings. With the imposition of central and political set targets, there are dangers that officers' discretion and operational independence is, is being compromised. So they're aware of this. And this is what it was uh, to protect. Police officers must be apolitical, impartial and accountable for their actions. If not, how and what will police become subject to political women and electioneering? The operational independence of our police service comes with the office of constable. <coughs> the office of constable ensures the integrity, impartiality and accountability of operational policing. If we value the rule of law, we must protect the officer constable and ensure forces have the ability to train officers to be apolitical, impartial, independent and accountable. So if it's corrupt at the top, everyone who's trained will be corrupt all the way down the line. So police officers need to, you know, educate themselves what they are. They've all got a responsibility to what they've sworn an oath to. Police officers must gain a foundation of knowledge. There you go. Police officers must gain a foundation of knowledge, like paedophile rings, uh, the, 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 the law, the history, the Pope, the Jesuits, all the intrigue, all the, all the infiltration, all the paedophile rings, and where all that roots and stems from. They, they need to gain a foundation of knowledge and experience in the execution of duty, because if they haven't got that knowledge, they're useless. They're just dumb, blinkered, and they can only act within their knowledge base. And if their knowledge base is choked and they've not been given the knowledge, then they can only act accordingly and then they're dependent on other people who feed them lies. In the execution of duty according to the rule of law, the use of authority and discretion, core skills and, excuse me, the practicalities and reality of policing. Governments must provide the resources to ensure sufficient numbers of multi-skilled sworn officers can all call upon whatever the demands. Is that being done? The government should, as a matter of urgency, undertake a full independent holistic review of policing experience, experience examining role, structure, governance, function and accountability. Otherwise there is a genuine fear that the current workforce modernisation programme could destroy the officer constable by default. Now is it a bit too late? Has that already happened? Because they're aware of it. They've written it into this. Uh, this is, um, you can get this on the government web website and this is given to every police officer. This document. What it means to hold the officer constable. Holding the officer constable means the police officer executes their duty independently without fear or favour. With the officer constable comes personal accountability and responsibility for the protection of life, property, prevention and detection of crime, and maintenance of law and order and detection of prosecution of offenders. 
Police officers must be allowed to police using common sense, free from political preference and political targets. The police, the officer constable and the rule of law protect this. The constable must be at the heart of policing communities, ensuring cohesion and security at a local, national and international level. Well, why have all the police stations been closed down in our local areas? And then you've got these 101 police officers taking their place who aren't constables, I don't believe. Those holding the office of constable and, and they're serving political agendas. Those holding the office of constable do so in full knowledge of the increasing dangers they face, the accountability both on and off duty and the restrictions placed on their family lives. So so they gotta be made aware of what, what responsibility they're taking upon before they swear the oath. Right, let's see what else I highlighted. Restrictions on private life, separation of powers. While the rule of law binds our society together, our equal importance is the separation of power, which prevents over concentration of power in any one institution, which is why the police officers have been set apart to be lawful, independent officers and jurisdictors of the law. So, what's choking our law? What's choking our police force? Let's read that second bit. At one level, this reflects the legislator, legislator, le, legislator, the executive, the judiciary, in the case of policing, politicians democratically elected, make the laws, police officers enforce them, and the jur judiciary decides on the outcome post-charge. However, we are each independent and separately ac accountable. Operational independence is a guiding principle of policing. So the first port of call for police officers is to go and enforce the government to stick to the original Bill of Rights. That's where the corruption's taken place. And that's why the law's being corrupted and they're serving the politicians rather than the law because the politicians have corrupted the law. The corrupt, the corrupt politicians in the law have corrupted it. The, tripa the tripartite relationship the Home Secretary is answerable to Parliament and the public for the provisions of the efficient and effective police service. The Office of Constable is fundamental to our system of politically independent policing by consent. It enables the holders to discharge their duties with impartiality and discretion. Communities are policed by members of the community. You can have greater account can't have greater accountability than that. It's a all a bit lip service in my observation and they've replaced the constable with um, 101 officers they've milked the constable down put them on traffic duty by the looks of it the police are the public and the public are the police so the police are for the public and they should represent the public right Rob, Robert Peel's principles of policing the basic mission for which the police exist is to prevent crime and disorder on all levels. The ability of the police to f perform their duties is dependent upon public approval of police actions. Well, who's listening? Police must secure the willing cooperation of the public in voluntary observance of the law to be able to secure and maintain the respect of the public. Police seek and preserve public favour not by catering to public opinion but by constantly demonstrating absolute impartial service to the law. Police at all times should maintain a relationship with the public that gives reality to the historic tradition that the police are the public and the public are the police. The police being only members of the public who are paid to give full time attention to duties which are incumbent on every citizen in the interest of community welfare and existence. Police should always direct their actions strictly towards their functions and never appear to upset the powers of judiciary, like lord it over people with their powers. The test of police efficiency is the absence of crime and disorder, not the visible evidence of police action in dealing with it, like seen to be doing. I just want to make a point here. If you're a lawful abiding citizen, right, you're, you, you know, and I can speak, I've met, met a lot of decent police officers and they're not they're not all fascist di dictators like they they have a reputation for and there are those kind of policemen and police women 
or police people leading others astray like that. So if you if you are a law abiding citizen, you've got no reason to fear the law, and 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 you should really get on with the police. You sh you you should honour the police. I don't I don't mean being respect to people because they are the police, but you should honour the the law, as they honour the law and honour the their public duty. And and on, there are police officers like that, but uh, um they're in a minority. Right, I've just got a few more highlights before I end in this uh, video. I think that was it. Well, that's it. So that's the Officer Constable for serving the Bill of Rights where, about Roman Catholicism and the coronation oath stemming from the Bill of Rights to keep out popery, Jesuitism and Roman Catholicism out of our nation. I'm not saying hang and burn all Catholics, not at all. Um, not against individual people, but the heresy of the doctrine and the machinations of the Catholic Church. That's what the Bill of Rights was for. That's what the Queen swore the oath for. That's what our government swear to uphold. That's what our police swear to uphold. So my question is, my observations, why isn't that taking place? Why is it treated so lightly, like a doormat? Why are they opposing Brexit? Where are those powers? Who are those powers? Who are law? Who who's in allegiance to these powers in our government? Liberal Democrats have openly said they do everything to, to stop Brexit. Right? Well, who are they loyal to? Do a bit of digging. Who's feather in their nest? Look at what Jeremy Corbyn said. Totally against what Boris Johnson has said. He's put no deal on the table. He's done everything in his power, even compromised, and they're still against it. They're still playing the games. They're still breaking the law. And they're stopping Brexit. And then as I started, I'm going to finish with the, the clip of uh, David Cameron in or out and the question is why aren't the laws being enacted in our country who's got the gun to the head of our nation who's put the arm of our law behind its back and twisting it and making it serve its will and rallying and putting its cells into power and leading the charge to stop us getting out from its grip and hold and the question is if we do get out of Brexit we do get out of Europe with no deal I just want to give people the heads up don't retaliate violently by rebelling because what they what I think our government should do if that happens is they should clearly state that there will be machinations to cause riots and unlawful disruption and, and draw a lot of people against our government and our law and if our government were prepared for that and openly remind the public and I said this last year I wrote to our local councillors just to re-clarify what November the 5th was about I got threatened to have my head kicked in I was told I was a dumb idiot and I should shut my mouth and learn how to spell. You know, he was picking me up on one word I spelt wrong and then he threatened me. This was a, this was a councillor, a local councillor. You write to your local MPs, they don't even reply to your letter. They're all wishy-washy and all watered down. They're all loyal to these slack powers, these unlawful, lawless powers. And all I said to them, why, why isn't the true meaning of um, November the 5th remembered? And why is it just bonfire night and it's, to sp and it's all sponsored by all these private bodies and all the council get a bung from that through their advertising and, th and then they hold a bonfire night because it pays for the bonfire night but they don't teach the public or the youth the, the relevance of why we have that. They don't teach Parliament the re relevance of why we had the Bill of Rights. And they don't teach 
officers of the law, civil servants of the law, who swear an oath blindly to what they're swearing an oath to, and they treat the law lightly. That's, that's treating God lightly. That's treating his son lightly. That's treating the word of God that's preserved by law. That's treating our office, the office of our queen and the offices of our government, all of it, lightly. And they're just as guilty within it, treating it lightly, the offices they hold. And then the whole slack has gone right down into the public body and they're dumbed down and blinkered. So it can't get any worse than it already is. And if it stays, it's only going to get worse. So it's my, my appeal to reaffirm what this law is about. That's why I've, in my own feebleness, in my own brokenness and simple-mindedness, have tried to highlight. So I only hope that, that somebody who watches this either passes this on, either shares this, it, it brings them back to that point and shares it. And I only hope that, you know, that other people will follow suit who've got um, bigger platforms to share the information to get this, get this uh, truth. And if it is truth, I pray that that truth will have free course as well as the gospel of Jesus Christ, that God is mercifully and stretched out for all people to come to the knowledge of his love and mercy and forgiveness, his finished work on the cross, the death of God's Son, the death of the Lord and God and Creator, who came in the flesh, was crucified, being innocent and holy, shed his precious blood to redeem us, because he was holy, he could redeem us from sin, and he was resurrected the third day, to overcome sin and death and entered into a heavenly place where he came from in eternity that we could have a part in his kingdom that's the kingdom of God it's within our hearts it's not a kingdom that's going to be built by political powers because Christ is a stone without hands and he smashed all these kingdoms and triumphed them on the cross and his kingdom's a heavenly kingdom is to come in the future when he comes but we can have an inheritance in that kingdom today in our hearts that's what the gospel teaches that's what our laws uphold and protect in our nation we are a blessed nation and we're losing it it's going to be taken from our nation if we don't look after it if you got if you're a privileged family and you're parents brought you a wonderful gift like um, a replica Aston Martin or a replica Daimler or a rep replica Rolls Royce and you didn't look after it you know the likelihood is that they take it off you for not re not respecting it not not um, appreciating the gift that they've brought you on any level in any family you know it's some if parents uh, spend a lot of money on their child to have something and they don't appreciate it, they're likely to confiscate it off them. I know if I didn't look after my, my things, that they would be given to someone else or they'd go in the bin. And, um, you know, it's the same thing. And that, that's what our, the Word of God says. Our, 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 all people are under condemnation. The, the, the bishops and all the people in, in the church are, 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 are damned because because they've gone slack. They're more loyal to the whore of Rome than they are to the Bill of Rights. And I don't know what our Queen is, what, what, where, she, where her, her loyalties lie, or what, what compromise and hold that these powers have got over our government. But I, I, would just, I just pray that things will change, that we will have peace in this nation, we will see a turnaround, we will see some fruit of repentance. And then um, the law will have free course and the gospel. So I'm going to close there and share these things with you, with, with you in sincerity, with love, for the glory of God. In the name of my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Three years ago, I committed to the British people that I would renegotiate our position in the European Union and hold an in-out referendum. Now I'm delivering on that commitment. You will decide, 
and whatever your decision, I will do my best to deliver it.